Thanks, Roman, so much for showing us this. I appreciate your def defiance. I appreciate your strength. Growing in the urban situation, growing in the desert. Thanks. Good job, buddy. Sin City, y'all. Sin City with the Sin City Farmer. <laughs> we are in Las Vegas. Where are all the lights, buddy? Yeah, they're that way. Okay. Yes. I like this attitude, man. I like this uh, Vegas strong attitude. I appreciate that spirit. Yes, absolutely. You know, we definitely care about the victims and their families, and we want to give firsthand look at our pride for our you know city here and yes. our love for everybody. I'm Roman Garay with Sin City Farms. I'm living kind of for more su a sustainable type lifestyle. I'll mention this while we walk around to the backyard garden. Five inches of rain here. <laughs> this is a desert. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't think we're urban, just listen. You hear those planes? We can't stop for it. Yeah. We can't stop for it. There's you too many. Stop it. No. <laughs> tourism. Whoa. Hopefully that tourism keeps going. We need a more. Yes, keep those that. planes flying. Whoa! Oh my gosh, man. Look at this backyard. Are you for real? Five inches of rain. How hot is it right now, too? Uh, it's in <laughs> the high 80s. And it's okay. October, what, 9th? Yeah, I, I, okay. I'm still struggling to put my fall crop in. Okay, show us what's going on, buddy. Give All us the right. tour. So this is my first bed. I have uh, 12 of my beds, which is on the um, Curtis Stone. My name is Curtis Stone. I'm an urban farmer. I run an operation called Green City Acres in Kelowna, BC, Canada. So when so, you say Curtis Stone type bed, you're talking about 30 inches. 30 inches, but uh, this is, these are tilled. 25. Okay. No, this is actually no-till. Oh, okay. I uh, went with a no-till method, but but 30 inches wide by 25 foot long. So tell me, how do you prepare these garden beds if you're not tilling? Yes. So the natural soil underneath, I use a digging fork and, well, I had a get a lot of this crust out of here this was yeah. all rock this whole backyard 100 percent this rock with no plastic liner underneath wow so that rock right there right there that was the backyard that you inherited did you grow those in those pots or did you buy them like that no i i put those in the pots i had a uh, some throughout here this is what used to be a tomato bed and i put it um, intermixed it in, into the tomatoes just to okay kind of What's your source of water here in Las Vegas? Well, I'm using overhead over there with okay. the timers. So it's from the city water? Okay. But there's filters on it. You can see the white filters on there. Okay. But yeah, this water out here is pretty, pretty dry, okay. chlorinated bad. So, you know, filters are necessary. Even if I do any pot watering, mm -hmm. I'll let it sit for at least an hour, maybe two before I use it, just to get rid of that chlorine. So I'm taking it, you have to use the shade cloth for sens more sensitive plants like this in this kind of climate? Exactly, it's okay. especially my lettuce. Um, it just does way better. Uh, and you know, I had to keep the lettuce going throughout the summer for the market, so oh, okay. it worked out well. Are you in a market? Uh, yeah, the downtown farmer's market. Oh, you, do you do this and full-time, part-time? Uh, full time right now. It was just like uh, you know, it's a test uh, oh. plot for now. Uh, oh. But I definitely wanted to try all the markets and and even uh, local restaurant uh, Veggie Nation. Uh, okay. Selling to them as well, so it's working out well. So you really are doing the Curtis Stone method. Like you're you're, you're gonna make a career out of this. Yes. Okay. Good. That's the plan. Good for you, buddy. Farming in an urban setting is kind of more of a test right now. I wanted to start small, uh, not get overwhelmed on too much land, but I definitely have plans in the future to get a lot more acreage and do this more of a larger production. Thank you. Okay, now, is that lettuce bitter? No. You're gonna have to prove it to me. You're gonna try it. No, okay, you're gonna have to prove it. All right. This is uh, okay. Lola Rose. It's hard to from. believe that lettuce growing in this kind of temperature isn't going to get bitter. 
Yeah. Wow. Good job, buddy. Not bad, huh? Good job. It's nice. You want to try this other one here? Nice. Good job, buddy. Curtis Stone would be proud. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> uh, those are beet greens right there. They do well, actually exposed in the, the sunlight, but uh, but I have some underneath the shade cloth to keep you know production going, and uh, they they just grow so fast. So I'm not harvesting any of the beets. I'm just using the greens. So that works out well. Cool. And the amaranth does really well too. Um, but it, you know, it's starting to go. It's, uh, it's mainly really, really in the heat of the summer. So um, that's starting to go. So I'll start to put some other stuff in there. So I'm starting some of my fall crops, you know, like I said, I'm doing a little small little patch, but this is uh, some of my cilantro. We done over here? Um, I kind of wanted to show you this little patch over here. All right, and over here we've got what I call a little like permaculture patch that I, it was an experiment, is an experiment. So I threw down uh, some mustard in here. Was this without any preparation? Zero. Wow. Yeah, zero preparation. Uh, I, I did throw a little bit right here, but that was zero preparation there. You can see some cilantro in here. I've got some chard growing. I even threw peas down in here. So, you know, it's just a little test that I wanted to see what would happen. And uh, so far, so good. Is this your mulch right here, these palm leaves? Yes. Cool. So I had uh, like four palm trees throughout the yard before I started this. I had to pull them all out and I was thinking like, gosh, I could use those for mulch and to keep my shoes from getting mud on them. So Perfect. it worked out well. Okay, one more section. Yes, yeah, so these are some of my root crops here. I've got some radish growing here that I just seeded about two weeks ago. Um, so they're starting to come up. I'm kind of keeping an eye on them. have to babysit them for any you know, bug pressure. What would you do if you did end up with some bug pressure on these? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd probably just let them go because uh, it doesn't take long for the bagratas to completely decimate. I mean, okay. literally overnight, they're, and they're gone. Okay. So I just let them go, and then I'll just turn them and okay. plant something else. So by watching it close means yeah, coming and replant them if you need to. You'll see they kind of just turn dry. They look dry, and and then you'll just that's turn into nothing after okay. a while. As far as the challenges, I, the heat is definitely going to be one of them. But you know you can't do it with the proper, you know, like I said, like I do have the shade cloth. You know, so you can do this, and of course you will have some bug pressure. Like I do have bug pressure. I think everybody is gonna have that, but you can still grow uh, and just prevail from what those bug pressures are and see what does well. Tell us about your watermelon. Is that a huge, <laughs> is that a huge success there? Or is that, uh, it did is that well normal? for a while, but now it's got bug pressure. The, okay. uh, the squash bug from, I had some zucchini going in this middle uh, row over here and I'm sure they just migrated over here and just okay. took them out. But I mean, they're still flowering as you can see. Do you ever harvest any of them? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, and okay. even the seeds. Can... Are those ready? Um, I think they're over ready. <laughs> okay. Well, you want to eat one? <laughs> no. Or they're uh, bad? I mean, they're that yeah. over ready? Yeah, I think they're what, like really, really over ready. Okay, let's gamble. You We're in gamble? Vegas, man. Let's gamble. You're not going to sell them or anything. That's true. Here you go. You got a knife? Yes. Every gardener's got to have a knife in his pocket. What do you think? I'm thinking... Uh, uh. Nope. Nope. Not ready. And it kind of looked like the uh, okay. the tendril was dried, which is usually the telltale sign. Is that everything then, Roman? Nope. Then we got uh, some Malabar spinach, was, which does... Ooh. Mm -hmm. It does really well out here in the desert, so. Yeah. Hey, look here. Hey. He gave us awesome. a lunch and dinner. Ooh, I like it. Fresh salad. To go with my yummy salad dressing from yeah. Darcy. You guys been chilling over here in the shade? We have, it's so yes. hot. <laughs> What's your name? Marcy. What are you all about, Marcy? 
I'm all about Sin City Farms. <laughs> Love it. So glad you guys are here to come see us. Exciting, beautiful day. The cool. loud airplanes we've been talking about. I know, we can't <laughs> stop, we can't stop. It just shows the uh, economy's really good still here in Vegas. Yes. People are still coming to Vegas, that's yes. what we want. We want yes. Vegas strong. Yes. Keep on coming to Vegas, y'all. Yes. Whoa, what do you got going on here? Roman, just because you're in an urban situation doesn't mean you can't have a tractor. Oh my, look who's here. Hi. Look who followed us this way on his way to home. What was your name again? Roman. 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 And Marcy. Marcy, nice to meet you. Nice I'm, to meet I go by Boots. Boots, nice and to Ginger, meet you. And Ginger, my wife. Where is she? Uh, hi, Ginger. This is Ginger. Ginger's dad. <laughs> and his wife. Welcome. Nice, welcome. Now this is something when Justin told me you farmed it right downtown. <laughs> Las downtown Vegas. Zion. I'd say this is downtown Las yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. The, the strip is just a hop and a jump there. Uh, this is this is great. It's great you're doing this here. It'll so probably be it. it'll probably be catching someone else will want to do it. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely we is. People so. are trying to get some points from just, me and, and coming over I, I do tours and so Oh really? We, yeah, okay. Absolutely. And getting back to earth a little bit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the, that's what it's all about. I definitely was up for the challenge to try and farm in the desert, and I wanted to achieve something that other people are normally intimidated to do, and I want them to learn from what I'm doing so they can grow out here. And a lot of this, you know, a lot of the vegetables that are brought in here are from California. They're from Arizona. Utah, so uh, there's zero agriculture going on here, uh, and we need more. And we, I want to encourage more uh, people to grow their own. Them old branch there. Okay, well, hey, Pop. What? Well, <laughs> hello again. Yeah, My hello. Goodness. Two times in a year. This, you're our roadie now, I guess. <laughs> right. You're following us. Hey, we got our first roadie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Roman, it's been a blast. I'm gonna tell folks, I'm gonna encourage folks to follow you. This is an amazing guy doing amazing things, two terribly difficult things, urban farming, in the desert. If he can do it, anybody can do it. There are no excuses. Follow him at you. Sin City Farming. Sin City Farming on YouTube. YouTube. And, and I'll link it there. And, and down Instagram, the Sin City and Farming. And Instagram. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. God yep, bless you. Thank you. I think I'll be able to see it without my. I don't have to say anything to it. Nope, it's gonna be music playing. I should have put my glasses on. There you go. A little higher. There you go. Oh, slip it down to the left. There you go. It's okay if there's a little bit of white there. There you go. Is that gonna go okay? Uh -huh. You do it. What are you working on, Lily? Making a leaf pile. Okay. What are you working on, Mr. Brown? He's working on putting the stuff in the 